Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Big changes on the way after what has been an incredibly warm fall. We're about to see some dramatic changes going into the end of the week. Probably the first real blast of what I would call fall weather. And you can see the system developing here on the map. It's a very large system. We've got a big broad low um, over the Midwest. I'm actually going to put on uh, some of the precipitation types. So you can see there is some cold air on the backside of that low over the Western Great Lakes, upper Midwest. Um, and that's the cold pocket. Now down to the south, you can see there's a couple of fronts here. It's a really fascinating kind of setup here because there's a low pressure system and some of the moisture that was left over from Sarah, which is completely dissipated, but some of that moisture did get pulled north and you see this warm front. Now, right now you look at this and go, Brad, it looks like a bunch of rain heading our way. And while yes, there are some scattered showers moving our way today, tonight, and tomorrow, it's not a lot of rain. I'll tell you why, because this is going to be a much more active part of the system. This will block the moisture flow from coming north. So this will start to evaporate and fall apart. You're going to see that happen throughout the day on the radar as the moisture transport from the Gulf of Mexico gets disrupted quite a bit. But when this system moves through, there's two cold fronts that are going to move through. Each one is going to bring us a chance of much cooler weather as we go towards Thursday, Friday, Saturday into the upcoming weekend. So I'm going to turn off the satellite imagery just for a second here and we're going to look at the severe weather outlook today because there is a small weather severe weather outlook to the south you can see along the gulf coast you see it there i don't expect much up our way we did have a, a low risk tomorrow that risk has actually been pretty much removed completely from the forecast and kind of what i expected because there's just not much energy associated with this system so do not anticipate a lot of strong storms but there will be a lot of wind with this system as it moves through so let's take a look at that future cast so let's dive right into the future cast so remember what i said about this stuff down here robbing the moisture transport north let's go through time and you can see kind of the moisture kind of get all robbed and this is what you see oftentimes we call this gulf coast convection um convection is just another name for thunderstorms it will rob the moisture flow, especially with winter storms. You'll see that really rob a lot of the moisture coming north. And while this isn't a true winter storm, it is going to rob the moisture transport north. So that's why I'm not anticipating a lot of rain and really not that much strong or severe weather at all. In fact, it's just going to be a big wind event. But that front is going to move through. And then we turn our attention to this thing across the Midwest and the upper Great Lakes. That's the upper low. That's a pocket of cold air, not only aloft, but down at the surface. And as that moves down here, um, late tomorrow, especially into Thursday, it's going to pick up moisture and transport it down to the southeast. And well, the Great Lakes are wide open. Remember, the Great Lakes are, are really warm right now. So you're going to see a ton of moisture coming down here, interacting with the mountains. And that air will get lifted. And that's what we call northwest flow snow. If you remember with Helene, the devastation of Helene was because of warm, humid air getting pushed from the southeast and hitting the eastern facing slopes. And while this isn't as extreme as Helene, northwest flow is what happens in the winter when moisture gets picked up from the northwest and gets deposited on the northwest facing slope. So the same kind of lifting mechanism or orographic lift takes that moisture and lifts. You could see as we go through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there's going to be several waves of moisture coming in. And what I look for in these northwest flow setups in the winter are these isobars, moisture getting picked up from Lake Superior, um, Lake Michigan, and then perpendicular flow directly into the mountains. You'll see this off of Lake Superior, Huron, and even Erie. And that flow is a pretty good flow for some northwest flow. It's not great for snow in North Carolina, but in this setup, you see the little directional change here in West Virginia. That's where you see a little bit better setup for snow. So there's going to be snowfall in the mountains, but probably not as much as we're going to see up in West Virginia. Just to show you what this could look like, this is the probability of seeing two inches of snow. You could see in North Carolina, these, uh, these amounts are probably in the one to three inch range, but the chance of two inches is only maxing out at around 40 or 50 percent in the northern mountains. But you go up into West Virginia and there's a 90, 95 percent chance of two inches of snow or more. So how much snow are we actually talking about? Well, Let's take a look. We'll look at the blend of models. You know, I love this uh, forecast because this takes all the guidance, not one deterministic model you see spread all over online. Let's go with the blend of all the guidance, which is the best way to go. And this is a 10 to one ratio. So this is a very high end total. So this is overdone as well. You always got to read into these, um, which you will. These are not going to be precise. A lot of melting is not included in any of these maps. So just know there will be melting. We'll go into Saturday morning. I'll stop this Saturday night. I'm right there. You can see in the mountains of North Carolina, a couple spots could pick up three or four inches. Think of the Smokies, you know, three, four inches. Beach and Sugar Mountain, you're in the four inch range. But look it up in West Virginia. Some of these areas could see a foot plus 
Pocahontas County. So areas um, around Snowshoe, Timberline, Canaan Valley, and then down towards Winter Place could pick up five or six inches. So good news for the ski resorts. This actually will produce some much needed snow for them to kickstart their season, which a lot will try to open next weekend. And typically that's the ideal target date is Thanksgiving weekend. Often years the weather doesn't cooperate. Well, this year, if we get snow this weekend and cold enough temperatures, you're going to see snow making at least to lay the base, get the base going for next week. There is a warm up next week, but you could still build some base right now. So that's where we're expecting some of the snow to be the heaviest right now is up into West Virginia. But certainly our first winter event of the season for the mountains. Um, we did have that little bit of snow in October. That was really nothing compared to what's heading our way with this one. This definitely is a colder, wetter, and windier setup. So folks in the mountains, just a heads up. I know you don't want to see cold temperatures, but this is kind of normal for this time of year. The snow isn't going to be that detrimental. To me, the biggest story will be the cold air and the wind. There's going to be a lot of wind with this system, um, and we often see that. So just a heads up, a lot of trees, sometimes we call them widow makers that are hanging on other trees from Helene. Just be cautious in wooded areas. There could be branches or trees that could still come down with these gusty winds. And this will be moving in, especially Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. I will post updates for the rest of the week. And don't forget, my winter forecast is coming out on Thursday at 11 o'clock. We will update the 20th annual winter outlook for the Southeast. Stay tuned.